uh, you know, I love how it's all coming full circle and it's almost like we're reuniting. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So, um, and the way it was done, very, very clever. You guys, you guys did well. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, I just, I, I have a really bad memory. Um, and so, so do I. I feel bad because I'm like, I don't remember you. Um, oh, you know what might, but, you, know. you know, what might help you remember me is it was 2016 and I couldn't figure out Skype. Okay. I was well, a like, lot of people can't. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. And you felt so bad for me. I was like trying to log on to Skype. And then finally you were like, Eric told me to just message you on Messenger. So you friend requested me a really long time ago. We became friends on Facebook for a brief time. Yeah. And then and that's how we did the little bit of session. Really? And then yeah. And that's when you told me all these different things. And I thought. No way. Like it was 2016. I was like a mom of like, um, my son was young, you know, it was really little. I didn't even know who this Dolores Cannon person is. I was like, well, maybe I thought maybe you got me mixed up with somebody else. <laughs> and I was like, cause like, you were saying, that doesn't sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, you were like, oh yeah, you're going to like do Dolores Cannon's method and you're going to get really good and you're going to teach it. And then you're going to be writing books and they're successful books and you'll be speaking about it. And I was like, yeah, this is not, oh, me. <laughs> I was like, oh no, it's not. No, I think she's got me confused. <laughs> like maybe the, maybe because I joined this reading so late, I was like, it's a nice story, you know? And then it all started happening like little by little by little. And then when I found Dolores Cannon, it was like, oh, maybe Emma was right. And then when I wrote a book, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I remember she was talking about this. And then I started speaking about it all over the world. And I was like, that's it. She is so good. And, and I told everybody about you. I mean, I'm sorry for the doubt in the beginning. Oh, no, I just you thought... do not need to apologize. You know, um, when it comes to channeling, most people will approach it with some kind of skepticism. Um, and it, the thing is, you know, what I do, it's not to convince any of you. I'm not here to prove to you that I'm the real deal. Uh, I'm not here to prove to you that spirits truly exist. I'm just here to pass along a message. And what you choose to do with that if you choose to ignore it, if you choose to think this is crazy, if you choose to embrace it, that is all up to you guys. The thing is, when spirit knows that a certain job or a certain uh, aspect of your journey is super important, not only for you, but also for the collective, they're really going to make sure you get the message. <laughs> you know they're not gonna play around they're like this is bigger than just her as a soul um and so you know I, you if you look at where we are right now in the world there's it seems like there's so much chaos going on um things are falling apart things are like coming to light that you go oh my god that's horrible and how can people do that to each other and this and that but we're also living in a very exciting time because people are starting to question everything. And so yeah. in my book, questioning is a good thing, you yeah. know, but I also feel like we need to be open to the impossible. It definitely taught me yeah. to be open. And like you were saying earlier, some people don't, um, you know, follow spirit. I feel as if I had absolutely no choice. Every single thing in my life was like, you're doing this to help the collective. <laughs> there is no choice. And exactly. It's been great. I've just like surrendered. All these books are not written by me. They're written by the collective, the higher consciousness that has an agenda and it wants this information shared. Probably the same thing that you do. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, you're helping on this grand level. But I will say one thing in that reading that really shocked me was that you were, you mentioned some of my relatives who had passed by name. And I was like, huh, well, that's pretty 
weird. <laughs> See, like, it happens a lot no. when names come through, but not always. See, um, I have a, I have sessions where I get like 20 names and birthdays and um, personalities. And sometimes I even do like this one reading uh, with, with somebody from New Zealand, I believe. And I kept flicking my teeth and she's like, why are you doing that? My grandma used to do that all the time. And I'm like, what? Because I never do that. I didn't even notice because I was so much in my trance, you know, and she was talking and, and she just kept staring at me with this weird stare. And I'm like, am I saying anything that resonates here? And she's like, I am too much in shock because you're doing the exact same thing she used to do. I mean, it was a tick that she had. I had no idea, you know? So it's a lot of fun, even for me, when we get a lot of validations, like names and dates and yeah. secrets, things that like, oh my God, I never told that to a soul. Not even my husband knows about that. Um, you know, those are a lot of fun for me because I'm like, okay, I'm not crazy. Uh, <laughs> it's fun, um, you know, but not every reading um, you get the name. Sometimes spirits really yeah. are just, sometimes it's just angels that are coming in or a spiritual group or a collective. And, um, you know, every reading is completely different. So I'm happy that you get to connect with uh, some of your relatives, but you know, oh my it's gosh. Not, you know, I don't want people to expect that because yeah. expectations usually will block things like that. When I, well, I do think... readings, just be open to receive whatever. And that is the best way to go into a session. Don't have any expectations. Well, what I felt later on is I thought about that reading and the fact that it all, every single part of it came true was that I noticed something about that reading that I really think makes you so good at what you do is that you don't have a filter, your own filter on the information. You just let it come out. You're like, look, this is the way it is coming to me, you know, yeah. instead of Whether like, you believe it or not, this is it. Yeah, Take it. This is it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I think that was so key as I like started to think about it later and you know it was a while ago so now I have like a different <laughs> respect for it. at first you're like this lady like so off she's not even that's what I thought uh, the what thing I is I think what mo a lot of people have told me and you know what spirit has confirmed to me in all honesty, I don't care what comes out. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's I'm sorry if that be. makes people feel bad, but I can't care. If I care, I will influence it. So I don't care what yeah. comes out. All I want is the truth. All I want yeah. is purity. And so because I don't care, I kind of create that feeling of eh, whatever. Um, yeah. I'm like, it's your, your, your show. You guys figure it out. I'm, I'm <laughs> no responsibility on my end, whether people like it or not. Not my, <laughs> I step away from that responsibility of I need to uh, please people. I'm, I'm step, you know, I've stepped away from that a long time ago. And the more I did that, the more clear information came through because I was no longer in the way. And so you might have noticed, and a lot of people who've had readings with me could probably confirm, I just start going blah, 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 blah for a whole yeah. hour. <laughs> I don't even think about what comes out. I don't stop and pause and go, what am I saying here? Or, you know, sometimes <laughs> they just show me visuals and they have to look at it and, and, and trust what I feel about it because not everybody's a chitterbox but usually I just go bleh and I just let it go and like for the whole hour people are like and then at the end of the session I will go oh wow an hour flew by for me it feels like five ten minutes but it's like an hour and then I go do you have any more questions and they're like no, you've answered all. <laughs> yeah. Well, what was even more impressive was that we didn't even have an hour. We had like 20 minutes yeah. <laughs> because I couldn't figure out Skype. <laughs> well, I think they just tried to get in there. What was they, they got doing? it? They were like, dude, yeah. get it, get it. <laughs> They're like, you're going to do this. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> so cool. Anyway, let yeah. me introduce you because we've been talking and talking. See, that's what I like. I don't prep for anything, not even for these sessions. There's no prep on my book, on my end. So for the people, <laughs> by the way, people, this is Sarah. 
<laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> is it Sarah Breskman? Is it Cosme? Is that how you say it? Yeah, Sarah but Breskman I, I'm Cosme. Not really, really good at expressing names uh, correctly. Um, okay. So basically, you are at the moment, you are a incredible author. You've had uh, two great successes worldwide, I've heard. Um, and you are a, if I remember correctly, a QHHT practitioner. So you <laughs> are a hypnotherapist. Um, mm-hmm. And you also, you were a student of Dr. Brian Weiss, which is really uh-huh. awesome. Very jealous. Thank you. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, you had two books, The Hypnotist's Journey to Atlantis and A Hypnotist's Journey to the Secrets of the Sphinx, which is really cool because the Sphinx one is like, wow. But um, uh, before we we go into the books, I'm just going to la- allow you the opportunity to introduce yourself because I'm really bad at introducing people. Um, but you have an incredible journey, you know, from meeting me to where you are now. So so how did for you how? Well, first of all, introduce yourself a little bit and um how did the spiritual journey start? Did it start before me or did it start after? (laughs) I don't want to take the credit here. It really isn't me. It was her team and her family members that stepped forward. But what happened? What, what made you go into this whole spiritual direction? Well, I just started out as somebody with a lot of problems. I mean, when I was younger, I had, yeah, (laughs) we all got back. Oh my gosh. I was like, one of those people though, you know, you just feel sorry for you're like, Oh gosh, poor girl. You know, I was overweight. I had all kinds of phobias and fears and all kinds of issues like sleep problems, like whatever. And then I was a super hypochondriac, like manifester. So if somebody else had a problem and I thought about their problem, I could get that problem on top of all my problems. Like it was really bad. I was oh, like, you were very empathic. It sounds like yes. always very. taking yes. on everybody else's luggage. Yes. I was like, let me just take your problem too. No problem. I'll add it to my towering list. So I just went to regular therapy and I thought that's what I wanted to do with my life was to become a psychologist. Like that was my plan Mm because I didn't know any other modalities or anything like that. And I really wanted to help people. So I went to college to become a psychologist but something really weird happened to me. Like two months after I started college, I went back to my family's house and I walked through their house and there's a mirror, like right when you come in Mm -hmm. and I noticed, oh my God, like while I was away for those two months, I had forgotten to have all my problems because I lost weight. I forgot to have sleep issues. I had forgotten to have all my weird fears and phobias. And I felt like this huge aha moment, like, Oh my gosh, like I don't focus on it. (laughs) I realized that like I had changed my environment and I had changed my thought patterns. Mm -hmm. And that just totally changed my life. I mean, I don't have those. You should see my car. I don't have OCD anymore whatsoever. (laughs) But after that, I just thought "Hmm, there's something about these thought things, you know. Mm -hmm. But I just graduated college and I was going to. Um, go to graduate school. But my job before then at, was to be a counselor at this halfway house where I was medicating people and counseling them okay. before going to graduate school. But it didn't take me more than like a week to feel as if every single thing I'd learned in college, like possibly could be a lie because I thought, here I am going to go into the field, I'm going to help all these people. But it wasn't, it didn't appear to be helping. It was like, Mm. just medicating them, and they will just stay here. Like, I thought, these medications and these counseling techniques were going to change their life. And then all of a sudden, they were going to leave. But I felt this was just my experience, not everybody's, but I felt like it just wasn't for me that there must be something better to help these people with mental illnesses, because that's that I was counseling people with mental illnesses. And these were people that were speaking with aliens or angels, and they were called crazy. And they were put on these really heavy duty medications. Mm -hmm. And I thought there's just, it just didn't feel right to me. I thought there must be something better. And 
then I started to realize that they were being tested on by the pharmaceutical companies. So they would be part of these tests. And whenever a new medication would come out, guess where they would test? Oh my On God. the residents. So they were all part of studies yeah. and they were all being used. And I started to really look deeper into what was going on. And I thought, gosh, I don't want to continue with this. I don't want a part of this, you know? But it didn't so resonate I, with your no. empathic, you know, when you're yeah. an empath, you're at a different frequency. And that is like, yeah, I can see why that was like, oh, this is not, no, no, not for me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't care. I mean, yeah, I could go make a ton of money probably, but I'd be, I felt, I felt as if I'd be hurting people. I don't, mm. you know, and I just thought, is this the leading edge of thought here? Like all this college and this is how we help people, people that talk to angels and talk to extraterrestrials, like as if they're not people. You know, yeah. that's how I felt. So I quit. <laughs> I didn't continue. Good on you. Good on you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> and then eventually down the road, I found hypnosis and I I wanted to become a master hypnotist before I was going to help my sister-in-law who I briefly told you when you did the reading on me, my in-laws are Jehovah's witnesses. And I didn't know at the time that they were, they, you know, um, hypnosis was not, uh, something that they accepted. Oh, wow. Of course. You know? I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I know because I didn't either because I thought something like hypnosis, since people go in and out of hypnosis all mm -hmm. the time, and it's been used since ancient days, that mm -hmm. that would just be a normal thing that would be beneficial for somebody. But I didn't know. And I wanted to help my sister-in-law. So I thought, well, being a perfectionist that I can't seem to get over, I thought yeah, I'm going to be Yeah, well, me neither. Just give it up. Give, it's not going to happen. I think it drives us. It drives us. It you does. Know? I think so. Like, there's benefits to everything. But it I drives thought, us crazy, too. But, you know. It does. It does. <laughs> got to find but that I balance. Thought, between yeah. crazy and sane. <laughs> but at least we do a good job while we're crazy there and we sane because of the perfectionism. Yeah. But I thought I'm going to become a master hypnotist first before I approach her. So in order to do that, I had to do lose weight, quit smoking, and pass life regressions. I had to do like a hundred of those over the years and be judged on them to become a master hypnotist and know like, you know, everything about doing these. And as I was practicing the past life regressions, I felt as if these seemed to work. <laughs> like there was something about Ooh. it. <laughs> something, <they're> really, <laughs> something in this here that actually was helping people. And, and, you know, I didn't have that kind of background. I did not have a spiritual background whatsoever. So this was really new to me. And it started opening my eyes to see what was underneath people's consciousness mm -hmm. and to see like this new world, basically. It was if I started opening my eyes underwater and I was like, whoa, there's a lot to life that Look I that. didn't know. Look at that. <laughs> People are talking They're about new. the same Other lives. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, is this really true? And then it was like, yeah, it seems to be because these people are healing themselves. Mm -hmm. So I studied with Dr. Brian Weiss in New York and I was doing his method for a while. And I, that's when I felt like something was missing. I was like, there's something missing here. So I watched that show channeling Eric and I saw you and I just really resonated with you. So I, it was easy back then to get a session with you because it was so long ago. Yeah, and, sorry. And you, <laughs> you then were I got like, busy. <laughs> and, and you like, it was funny because you just seemed to know right away. You're like, I know what's missing with you. You're like, this is such an easy reading. And then you're like, you're going to do Dolores Cannon's method. You're going to write these successful books and you're going to be speaking about it around all over the world. And you're going to be, um, you know, carrying this message from spirit and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, that's when I was like, oh, what a bummer. She doesn't know me at all. <laughs> so sure enough, now that's exactly what I'm doing. And 
I wrote two books, like you said, so far, I almost have my third one out, but that's how I got into this. But the way I got into this whole Atlantis stuff was totally by accident. Like every other thing that seems to happen to me, it's so funny. Accidents. We (laughs) now know there are no accidents. (laughs) I know. Like even where I live, it's just hilarious how your life works. You know, you just, if you just go with the flow, you know, there's no accident. You you are the proof. You are, you know, you are the living, breathing proof that if you just allow the signs to guide you in an unknown way, direction right not knowing where this is going to lead and really not worrying about it I'm just going to see what happens even if you don't believe it too yeah (laughs) you know you just you allow the universe to take your hand and relax go with that flow and see what happens allow the universe to surprise you And when we live our life in that way, instead of always trying to control, where is this headed? How am I going to do this? How am I going to create this? How am I going to get to that final end destination? I want to feel this accomplishment. I want to attract this. When we are constantly in a state of trying to control the universe, we won't get anything we want. It's just not possible because you're constantly in a state of resistance of the bigger, even more better idea that the universe has for you. But if you just say, ha, today I feel like doing this and you follow through and you just follow your feelings like you did, "Mm, I feel like something's missing, although it's great. Something was missing. You felt it and you allowed the universe to show you what the next step was. And then you were like, "Ping!" I remember them telling me that. So you were, you know, and that's the thing when it comes to readings as well, that they are not going to make things happen for you. They are just here to drop ideas and to say, look, this is a possibility. That's a possibility. This is what you were meant to do, but you can go the other way if you want to. But look, this is an opportunity that's ready for you to, to absorb, to become. Um, all you need to do is engage. Engage with the universe you're living in. Engage by being very mindful of all the signals and signs that are coming in. And now it looks like you've transformed from a very kind of scientific background to, ah, let's just see what happens. You know, these books yeah. write themselves. All I got to do is they do. ask the right questions. <laughs> <laughs> they literally, it's like the higher consciousness or spirit, whatever you want to call it, has an agenda. Mm -hmm. So they're, they literally, you know, organize, oh my gosh, it's so crazy. They organize all my clients. They, they have them come to me and they share these things. They're They're happy to have around. They are. But I just thought it was a coincidence because the higher consciousness kept saying, oh, you need to write a book. You need to write a book and you have to include this information. uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, right. (laughs) How am I going to do that? I know. It's like, I'm not a writer. (laughs) (laughs) But it all started because I wanted to get this video submission to take to this class that I was taking. It was like the highest level of the Dolores Cannon Mm -hmm. um, method that I do, which was funny because in the reading, you're like, and you're going to help teach it. And I was like, yeah, whatever. But I was. I did. I do. Actually, I am an instructor. I was teaching all around the world before the quarantine. Another thing that you said that like completely came true. Um, But uh, I wanted to get this video submission and take it to that class. And I needed somebody on the spot. And this is how funny spirit is, because I like I had this thought that popped into my head. Ask your friend, Jen. And Jen's like the most skeptic person that I knew, you know, like of all people. Those are the best subjects. (laughs) Oh my gosh, they really are. Actually, I do like having, those are the the best people that come in for a session and they're like, I don't really believe in any of this stuff. Those are the best because they don't know the information consciously and I can feel good about using the information. But Mm -hmm. um, I asked her if she would be my subject 
And then I instantly regretted it. I was like, oh my gosh, why did I ask her? Because she's so not into this stuff, you know? And I knew that because we were friends for like 10 years and we talked almost every day on the playground and our conversations would be like really mundane surface level conversations because I had tried to throw some spiritual things about these past life regressions that were coming up that I thought were cool into the conversation and they were like instantly shot down. So I was like, <laughs> okay, okay, I know she's not into this, you know? But so I asked her and then, like I said, I regretted it. But I said, you know, would you want to be my subject? Because I need somebody on the spot because there's this class, it's in Florida and I really want to go. And I just need, can I do this past life regression on you where you can really find out about yourself and, um, you know, you can find out who you really are and your true purpose. And you can even heal your body if you have any physical issues. And she said, oh, that's what you do. Like as if she didn't know, you know, like here I am. I'm trying to talk to you like, every day. How old? <laughs> so, Have you been listening? I, apparently, no, not so much. And she was like, yeah, I would do this because she didn't tell anybody at the school. And she was the teacher there. And she didn't tell anybody that she was suffering from this brain condition called pseudotumor cerebri. And basically it was very severe. It was wrecking havoc on her body and her brain. And she was a young mom of little kids. And the, the doctors told her she only had like 20 years. It was that bad. And she was put on all, all these heavy duty medications. And there was a, a risk of a stroke. So anyway, she said, yes, I will definitely be your subject. She was working at the time. She was working really closely with a team of specialists at the University of Miami. So here we go to do our first regression. And I'm thinking, oh boy, it's past life regression. You know, what is she going to think? She's not very open to this stuff. So I'm just, I gave her a little brief background. I was like, you know, whatever comes up, you know, just see it as an observer. You don't have to believe it if you don't want to. So in our first regression, she goes back to another lifetime in this place called Lemuria. It's like this beautiful, um, calm and peaceful place full of loving people. And her, you know, she's describing it and in a lot of details and it's just absolutely beautiful, full of compassionate people. And it's really interesting, all the details, because there's a matriarchy and the women subconsciously pass knowledge down from mother to daughter. And they're the natural cool. leaders. Yeah, they're the natural leaders in this society because they carry this ancient, I knew important it. wisdom. I knew it. <laughs> right. So did I. I was like, yep. Yeah, I know that. Yeah natural leaders. Um, and it's, she started recounting this beautiful, um, place. And then she realized that there, there were these visitors that were showing up and they wanted something from their society and their society wasn't going to give it to them. This was our first session. So we didn't know exactly what was going on at the time. Well, these visitors, didn't get their way, took her as a prisoner and destroyed the whole continent. They had these like atomic like devices that they set off in rifts and they caused these huge tidal waves that just sunk the entire continent. And they took her as a prisoner where she lived in this place called Atlantis for about 60 years. And as we were doing this session, she saw this place, Atlantis, as very advanced, like this advanced society, where it was very smoggy for some reason. But they were doing all kinds of different tests, trying to find out what kind of immunity she had. And they wanted to know more about the way she used these specific red crystals, because they were looking for uh, that ability as well. And in this prison, in this place called Atlantis, she learned a lot about the lifestyle there and what was going on. Um, during the session, when I asked to speak with her subconscious, they said that the reason behind her pseudotumor cerebri was to get her to see me because the two of us had chosen before coming into this lifetime to uncover all this important knowledge because it was so needed desperately by the world now, uncover it all and share it with the world because it was the time was right for it to come out. We also learned that she had tried to share it before in the 1970s, but it was too early. And in that lifetime, she was called crazy 
lobotomized and she killed herself. So this is the next oh, life. Lord. She came yeah. back to try this again. So, you know, I thought, well, that's a, that was a great session, you know, and she went, I didn't think too much of it. I've heard a lot of things in these sessions and I've heard other people <laughs> say, you know, really interesting things. And obviously I have a hard time with trusting. <laughs> and so she goes back to her medical team and they can't find the tumor. It's completely healed. And wow. she comes back and she's like, this is incredible. They don't know what happened, but I totally healed. And I, that didn't surprise me because people heal themselves in these sessions because the body acts as a messenger. And once whatever is causing the issue is understood mm -hmm. by the conscious mind or whatever the purpose or lesson, it can be released because the body is literally trying to get our attention that way. Yep. But what did surprise me was that maybe we were called on to share this information. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so we decided to work together again, and we started uncovering more and more information about these two places, Atlantis and Lemuria. And then this weird phenomenon started happening where while I was uncovering this stuff with Jen, people started coming to my office for sessions who didn't know one another, and they didn't even know that I was uncovering this stuff with Jen and they were sharing the same stories over and Sounds over. Sounds to me like the universe over. was confirming, hey, yes, this is real. <laughs> Hello. But I didn't get it. I didn't get it. And I thought, man, this is such a weird coincidence. So there she goes again with her coincidence. I, know. <laughs> I was like, gosh, I can see your team now. Yeah. <laughs> One yeah, day, they, she'll get it one day. Yeah, they must have been like, gosh, man. Like, I mean, because people were coming in, they were literally like, I knew exactly where they were. They were describing the same coastline, the same, you know, they would always describe Lemuria's like with the these same, smooth like how pebbles. it was. Yeah, mm -hmm. the same thing. And then they were describing the wave. Countless people came in with like a fear of water that originated from this you know, giant wave, they had memories and phobias, and they were able to, you know, understand where that came from. And, and then countless people would remember Atlantis. In fact, mm -hmm. as I started to realize that it wasn't a coincidence, like my team must be just like, think I'm so ridiculous. I realized that this stuff had been coming to me since 2016, like right around the time I started, uh, I had that reading with you because I had a client where I did a Brian Weiss regression mm -hmm. and he remembered like this advanced society and there was like a quarantine and like a virus going on and stuff like that. And smoggy, it was smoggy outside. And, um, I just thought, wow, what a coincidence. But then, you know, as she likes that word, <laughs> it's all right, guys, she got it now. It's okay. So I, I keep, I keep hearing it in the back of my head. There's that word again. <laughs> I know. I start because I, I start asking my other coworkers, you know, people that do this method too. Do you guys also have people that just seem to go back to the same time in Atlantis and Lemuria? And they were like, no, no, we don't. And I was like, like okay, 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 okay. And, and the higher consciousness just kept saying, you know, the both of us were supposed to write books about this. So we started out uncovering this information. And, and then it gets even weirder if you want to know. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so I didn't really know much about extraterrestrials, to be honest with you. Like I've, I've had people before this, you know, I was just going into this method, Dolores Cannon's method, and before I was doing so many past life regressions. So, you know, here and there, somebody would remember being an extraterrestrial or remember like being on a different planet, but it wasn't something that I knew a lot about. Mm -hmm. And since Jen's higher consciousness said they wanted us to share the story from the beginning, I asked her subconscious, take us to the beginning of the story you want us to share with the world. Like, let's go to the beginning. And I thought she was going to regress back to her childhood mm -hmm. in Lemuria. And we were going to start from the beginning. That's what I thought. <laughs> but no, we, she, when she went um, 
back in time in her regression, she went back to a time where she was an extraterrestrial commander on a extraterrestrial ship crash landing on earth for the very first time. That's where they wanted us to start this story. So we uncovered where, how Atlantis and Lemuria were founded, the founder of Atlantis, how this all started, how the two civilizations had two totally different starts and how they were different because of this, because one was more advanced in their technology and one was more advanced spiritually because they didn't have this technology. But ultimately, it was a divine plan to see which, you know, to see and test what would happen. And ultimately there is no um mistake there's always mm-hmm. a purpose for everything sorry that's my dog that's yeah, okay <laughs> i figured <laughs> oh my gosh. well and it's, it's it's kind of funny because everything this whole atlantis thing seems to be very important for us at this time because it kind of ties in with very similar things we're going through on an emotional level um and for some reason it also brought me back to you because (laughs) as we talked about at the beginning uh when we first met my friend saw your uh, read your book and she was like oh my god you should see this book it's so amazing everything you told me about atlantis it's right here in the book it's just everything you said and blah 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 and all of that and she was so excited about the book because she was like this is it this is confirmation that you're not crazy (laughs) um and i was like oh okay so she was telling me all this stuff and i was like yep yep i've said that i've said that yep yep that's what i've received and and so oh. we've talked about it for hour, I think an hour or two, we were talking about it. <laughs> and then somehow I was like, oh, I need to reach out to this person and we need to do an interview. <laughs> so here I go, contact Sarah. I'm looking up on Facebook. She's not a friend of mine, probably because my account's been hacked several times and I have to Uh-oh. restart a lot of times. But and I'm like, okay, well, let's just send a message. Maybe she'll see it. Maybe she won't. Because, you know, sometimes if we're not friends, it ends up somewhere else. And I said, hi, I'm Emmanuel, and I'm a medium. And I introduced myself and what I did and all that. And she, she answers back, I know who you are. You changed my life. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and that's how we kind of got reconnected. So there's something about Atlantis. It's almost like Atlantis is, start, is trying to reconnect everyone who mm-hmm. has had lifetimes in that uh, time, in that timeline in order to create some kind of healing, some kind of understanding, something um, I feel from your books is here to help us heal uh, the struggles that we're going through now. And it's almost like they're trying to tell us, don't make the same mistakes. Yeah, Uh, that's that's kind of what it feels like. That's exactly what the higher consciousness keeps saying. Mm -hmm. And essentially why they want these books to come out right now, because what they say is that there's so many triggers right now to remind us of these past lifetimes for both Atlantis and Lemuria. And the triggers are to help us to go inwards and to release this trauma. And it doesn't Mm -hmm. really take much. All it takes is just to be triggered enough to start questioning. Like, why do I feel so triggered by current events? And to just really sit with that and Mm -hmm. allow yourself to get to to the point where you're ready to release the traumas from the past because essentially what I learned is that humanity doesn't evolve in a straight line it evolves in cycles and we're coming back to this point again where so many of us are back again now to do things in a different way and we're mm-hmm. cho- it sounds like it seems like according to the higher consciousness we're really choosing to um, do things in a different way in the fact that we're balancing our divine feminine and masculine aspect because both of those societies really seem to represent the imbalance. Mm -hmm. Lemuria was just very much a part of this divine feminine um, aspect, but it was an in complete balance at the time. They didn't, according to the lessons that come through my clients, there was a time to stand up for what you know is right and time to fight. And there was too much level of surrender there for Mm. them, apparently, according to them. And the Atlanteans didn't ever question what was going on in their government. It just 
in their government, there was like an elite few that basically ruled all of Atlantis and they were just Aww. everything. I know. People, La- in- listen. Information was being held, withheld from the public and they felt right. that was the only way to rule by keeping the public in the dark. And these things are resurfacing now so that we can really start to shed a light into our past and to see what we're doing here again. And ultimately is to finally learn these lessons and to create balance within ourselves and question. But it sounds to me like on. at that time, the differences created basically, you know, explosion. It created destruction. Yes. And yeah. now it feels to me like we're moving more, although it doesn't always feel that way. I know people, I know, be patient is what Jesus tells me all the time. Be patient. Yeah. Um, but yeah. because we're starting to question everything, right? And because we are looking, everything is sur- resurfacing that doesn't function anymore. And it may seem chaotic, but it needs to surface. Otherwise, we can't change it. Otherwise, we can't question, hey, what's really going on over here? That's why there's so many conspiracy theories, although 90% of conspiracy theories turn out to be true. Just given that fact. Okay, people. Mm -hmm. But um, because we're starting to question things. And instead of, you know, when we were kind of in lockdown, most people went into self-observation, self-reflection instead of, and a lot of people didn't go that way. A lot of people went the other way as well, more destructive ways. Um, but the, a lot of people went into self-reflection. They started to open up a consciousness that they didn't uh, hadn't tapped into, I think. And so because of that, we're now moving into a direction of finding balance between our spiritual self and our human self, the human ego, which, you know, there is always a duality inside of us. And that's okay, because that gives us the idea of an individual experience. Um, but there, it needs to be balanced. It needs to be, it's not all for me, or it's not all for them. It needs to be, it's for all of us. And that's the balance that we're seeking right now. And in doing so, healing and expanding our collective creation and therefore um, changing the things that no longer work for us as a society. But that takes time, but it looks to me, and you know, I really recommend people, um, if they wanna really get into detail of this, to go read your book. I saw it's like 300 pages or something. Um, so there's a lot of information there. Um, And it's really cool that you're getting this from many different people who haven't even met, who are not communicating with each other, yet you're getting the validation, uh, which means to me that the same collective energies are communicating to you through different human individuals, which is kind of cool. So let me ask you this. Do you sometimes ask questions about you? You go, hey, so about me. (laughs) They don't know they're under hypnosis. They don't know. Just tell me about (laughs) me. Well, I don't with um, paying clients, but with um, with the clients that I do trades with only, you know, a few, but most of the time, you know, of course I ask them because I'm It's normal. I would. (laughs) I would. It's okay. You can admit it. Sometimes we want our information, but it also helps you, you know, to continue to do what you do and to continue to yeah. assist the collective in this healing process. It's, it's really important to me that um, I just share this information with people because I feel if people only knew a quarter of the information that comes to the higher consciousness of these clients, they'd be so much less stressed out, Mm -hmm. so much less worried, because I know if I didn't know this, I'd be a lot more worried. But I'm serious when I say the higher consciousness says a lot of just what you just said. I mean, of course, you're very tuned in and tapped in. Well, I just say what I feel, and I know it's coming from somewhere (laughs) higher. I don't question it. But I know my I've started to understand my purpose a little bit better because I understand that the earth is going through some sort of an ascension. Mm -hmm. And so basically what I started to learn through these higher consciousness is that when there's a lot of trauma that goes on or a lot of um, karma and stuff that happens when civilizations are destroyed 
sometimes there's a lot of like trapped souls in these places. And then when they read a book like this, or they hear information like this, a part of them actually gets to be released because they understand what's, what's basically missing and it's released. And then that releases that heaviness from the earth as it makes this, um, this ascension process. So ultimately it's like healing the earth and the people. Is well, this, and I it's, guess, it's really but, one big, I mean, we're it's one big creative. Thing. It's of one course. big energy. And, you know, like you yeah. said, it's, it happens in cycles. And so earth yeah. has gone through different cycles of ascension already. And because right, we are course. part of that symbiotic kind of environment, uh, we move with her. And we're dealing here with a very complex thing, which is a multiverse, multidimensional planes, multidimensional um, experiences of the same earth. Um, mm-hmm. Because yeah. we are in different frequencies. You have people who are still in 3D, right. 4D, 5D, and who are moving up. So, um, I think it's important to really learn from 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 your books that communication was missing, I feel, in between the two uh, countries, in between the two continents Um, and communication in my understanding. That's the key to all healing is expression, letting things go, not being afraid to uh, say, look, I'm scared of this, or, you know, I need help. You know, so many people are scared to ask for help. So many people are scared to be themselves, or they're scared of judgment. So I think it's going to be crucial for our evolution to just be you and to not fear being excluded because one you can't be excluded you're all connected (laughs) right (laughs) you know even if you don't like me here I know you love me up there that's how I you know when I see people like oh you're a witch and you're going to hell and I always say thank you for that compliment I'd love to go to hell because there's a lot of people there Freddie Mercury's there he said it himself so that's you awesome know, you have to oh take gosh. it as you know and it took me a while to get to that stage too where I no longer feel hurt when when yeah. people attack you because in my line of business you're either crazy or you're ready for the asylum you know that's how they see right. it you know uh, right. or you're you're just in it for the money <laughs> you know? right right which I right. can guarantee you if you keep your prices <laughs> at my my level you don't get rich from it but I want to yeah. give the opportunity to everybody to have a session with their spiritual uh, team or their loved ones. So, yeah, I think it's important to learn from the information that you're receiving. The only thing, okay, the only thing that I did receive different because all the information about the countries and the, the what happened that was all identical what I received. The only thing that was a little bit different, and it could be uh, maybe a certain perspective, is you were talking about, or they were talking about, what was it, um, mermaids yeah. being real. So mm-hmm. when I asked my team, they tell me, no, they're not real. However, maybe they are a species and they're not like the way we see them as half human, half fish. Maybe right. they are a species that lived or still live in our oceans, but are not half human. So maybe right. it is because that's I'm, more that that it is could correct. be right. It could well, be. according to my clients, when they're under hypnosis, they consider them more fish-like almost at this point, and they communicate with echolocation. Although they do have hands fingers yeah. and they do have like a human humanoid face but it's not like the what you would picture right. as like a half human half fish it's not like that at all they yeah. are definitely more almost like porpoise like yeah so I mean it could be I mean when we ask a question to spirit because you know I have a patreon account and people can ask questions and that was the question it could be that that person really thought half human half fish and then that'll be a no but if it's a different kind of species 
then uh, maybe you know that that would be a maybe. <laughs> I don't know if you also, know what I'm it trying seems, to say. I do, I do, and also you know it. Um, a lot of sometimes my clients will remember being a mermaid or mer person, but they're on a different planet, like Sirius, like the water planet. And there oh. seems to be like a huge population there, but they they wouldn't really be considered human whatsoever. Yeah. So I don't know. You know, it could just be an ET no, race. It could just be an ET race be. who is in somehow ended up on Earth. Um, yeah. Because according to my guide Eric, he's he's always talking about oh that that animal not from this planet that one was a refugee <laughs> here. You know, right. he, there's so it's, many. It's a, there's so many. Yeah, you know, like octopus, and it, mm-hmm. they used to be a lot larger before uh-huh. humans, you know, existed. They've been here right. before the humans, and right. they, you know, that's what the, the the legend of the kraken comes from. They used to be much larger, but once right. humans started coming and occupying the oceans, and the food sources started going less and less and less, uh, their species evolved in order to, you know they had to evolve to survive. Um, So there's so many, uh, you know, it's so many animals that, that find their refuge here, you know, and, and and, and they come from other planets. And sometimes I, I, I've asked Eric once, so the animals that are almost extinct here, like, you know, they don't, do they exist on other planets? Because we can't take care of them. He goes, "Mm -hmm." they always take a few and put them somewhere where they're safer to reproduce. So right. um, that's kind of cool that the universe is taking care of species. Uh, you know, we're not aware of it, but it is happening. There is a some kind of federation out there that's watching out for all of these planets, watching, taking care of species who need help. So that's really kind of comforting, I think. I really think so too. There really seems to be a divine plan in everything. And the thing with living is, you know, I, I'm always told you just can't do it wrong anyway. I mean, you learn, that is true. you learn so much through all your mistakes and those are so valuable. And it's so funny because when you um, leave your life and you go into the afterlife, it's amazing how cool everybody thinks you are if you had an earth life because this is one of the hardest you know places to be to have a lifetime they say like there's so it's many other it's planets a very emotional one you know it is very an emotional one and from our physical perspective it's the hardest but not from the soul perspective right uh, right exactly yeah it's just i think being human can be very interesting if we allow it to be mm-hmm. and as long as we don't acknowledge the existence of mistakes because you can't make a mistake you're just here to experience that's it that is it yeah. you're not yeah. here to accomplish this and that and this and that and this right and that. you're just like i'm going on a vacation i'm choosing earth um, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna pick that vessel because I want to have these and that issues. I want to experience that. Yeah. And I'm hey, you guys, you guys wanna you you wanna annoy me in that world? Okay, yeah. Check. yeah. Thank you. I knew I could count yeah. on you. Yeah. Um, how about you? You're gonna love me to death. That's fine too. Um, you you. That's how you do it. Yeah. It is literally. It's kind of like a total recall. I don't know if mm-hmm. you know that old movie. They made a remake, oh. but don't watch that one. It's not good. Uh, watch the original <laughs> with Arnold Schwarzenegger. He goes in, you know, and he's like, oh, I want this vacation. And it feels to him like it's um, it's real. It's happening. He can right. feel the pain. He can feel everything. That's literally what being human is about. It, it is, is a total recall experience. We are in a little booth. I always compare it to Avatar, the guy with the paralyzed legs. That's uh-huh. the soul. And he puts his consciousness into a body and he experiences that body and that reality uh, to uh, as if it is real. And then when that body dies, we just open our booth and go, wow, that was interesting. Um, And just multiply (laughs) that with hundreds and hundreds of lives all at the same time. But um, I know it's really what it is. We're just here to experience. And you are having an amazing experience. It sounds like to me. 
And I just want to thank you for getting this information out. Thank you. You're part of, a, you know, you're a light worker. That's what you were always meant to do. You just needed something to push you in that direction to realize it, you know, and you're still growing and you're still um, experiencing and exploring the universe. Really, you're exploring the universe right now through your patience, through your work. So I hope you really embrace that and that you truly enjoy it, continue to enjoy it. Because um, I know a lot of light workers and they love what they do at the beginning, but then it's like, oh, okay, I'm getting really tired. Um, always continue to stay in the vibration of joy and playfulness. And just like I said, don't have any expectations, just allow yeah. the universe to continuously surprise you. Okay. It's really fun. I never know what they're going to share with me next or what kind of secrets they're going to share with me. And it's so cool because sometimes different extraterrestrial races will come through with different messages, you know, like one that's cool. that just reminds me of one, this um, group from uh, the Pleiades came through and they were saying, you know, humans don't understand that they're here just to be messy. They're here to make a total mess. They should just do everything everything you know just like totally make a big mess because it's so beautiful when you leave your life and you see everything that you did and you become one with the collective again because all these experiences are so valuable but we're not here to just you know sit safely till death we're here to like I go know. explore, I love go explore that. everything messy. And yeah, that's the thing. Look at me. I'm just going from place to place. I'm like, now I ended up in France. I'm like, ha, what's next? You know, whatever. Um, so, <laughs> you know, trying to create a spiritual center or I want to create a vacation center for handicapped children, things like that. Oh, wow. So um, a lot of stuff doing. And, and it's like, I have no idea how and when this is going to happen, but I'm already in France. I got the property and we just let things roll get messy. I love, I love that because we as humans are being programmed from birth that you can't get messy and everything has to be crystal clear and everything has yeah. to be um, clean and uh, functional and productive. You know, yeah. it, it's not just it's not. throw all of that away and just say, yeah. I just want to live. Yeah. That's and it. you know, I just want to have experiences. There are no rules. There are no regulations to life. That is a man-made concept that is imprinted into us so we would be productive for others. Exactly. Live it's not life. about that. No, yeah. live it. And if you yeah. hop from job to job to job, that's okay. That's yeah, how you, you can't explore do it wrong. yourself. You, with <laughs> yeah. every job, you will, get, you will meet new people. You will have a bigger <laughs> friend circle. You will, ex you will uh, discover aspects of yourself you didn't know. And so you just get a bigger and bigger uh, uh, idea of who you are, what you really want, where you want to go. And eventually you, yeah. it'll click and it'll be like, aha, just like Sarah. <laughs> She'll be like, aha, that's what it was. Yeah. So it's yeah. okay. Allow yourself to be messy. Allow yourself to make mistakes because you really can't make any. All you yeah, can you do really is can't. get closer to a fuller understanding of yourself. And that's it. Yeah. Exactly. It's beautiful. Isn't that amazing? Oh my God. This is so much fun. I know, I know we're running out of time. Yeah. We need to do another one. I guess we need to talk yeah. about the six. Hello. Oh my gosh. Yes. Hello. So we're Lots gonna, of secrets we're, we might have there. to do another one on that one, but oh my God, this has been so incredible. I am so happy. We refound each other. I'm so happy Me we too. reconnected. I know this was intervention because it just went because it was funny. So after my friend tells me about your book, I'm like, oh, my God, I got to contact her. She's so interesting. Let's talk about this on in an interview. And then the next day I get an email. Somebody talked about you and I want to. And she was talking about you. It was like, oh, OK, validation, validation. This needs to go. And then this morning, this one of my uh, my uh, steady followers is like, oh, my God, she somebody just mentioned you in their video. I was like, okay. Yeah. And I told the lady, yep, I'm meeting her in two hours. Um, <laughs> so it was just the universe constantly going, don't forget about this interview. Don't forget yeah. about this interview. <laughs> so there, the first interview is set. We've done it. We've reconnected. And I am so happy to hear that you followed the advice of your team of your loved ones. 
and that you allowed yourself to just row your boat and see where it takes you. That is beautiful. Thank you for doing what you're doing and helping so many people though. You know, like you helped me, you helped me a lot. I just really, really appreciate it. It is my pleasure. And I'm so happy that I was able to be that conduit for you to really um, open up certain uh, aspects of your awareness. That's really what it is. So um, I'm going to put all the links uh, for Sarah uh, in this video at the end of the video. It'll all be in there. Go check out her book, A Hypnotist Journey to Atlantis and A Hypnotist Journey to the Secrets of the Sphinx. I can't wait for the next interview if you're up for it. If you're tired <laughs> of, course. of me, you tell me. But I, I, have not, I have not channeled any information on the Sphinx. So I'm really curious to hear about that. Um, but um, yeah, this was just great. Thank you so much. It was so great. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, you probably have to go get your son. I do. Um, How'd you know? <laughs> I can it. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> I have to go get my son for you soon. But yeah. All right.